I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each episode, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hi, friends. Welcome to the show today. Dog lovers, we have a fun show planned for you today. We sure do. Carson has walked, we've had our coffee, and we are going to talk to you about the Enneagram. The what? Enneagram. Honey, it's uh, pronounced Instagram. Uh, Nope. Enneagram. Okay, maybe this will help. The Enneagram is an ancient model of personality in which there are nine personality types related to each other according to the geometry of the Enneagram figure. I'm more confused. Okay. Well, <laughs> basically, <laughs> it's a personality test that happens to have nine different types. Okay. Like, like a magazine personality test? I think it's a little more sophisticated than that, but okay. yes. You could relate it to that. (laughs) All right. So what does that have to do with dogs? Well, there are a couple of super fun ways that we are going to approach this topic in relation to dogs. First, we'll look at the nine different types and help you determine which type your dog is. And we will talk about how knowing which Enneagram type you are can help you be a better dog parent or help you choose the right dog for you and your family. And we also have an insightful interview with Texas local Enneagram coach Kelsey Taylor. We do. After we learn about the types, we will hear from Kelsey and about how the Enneagram has impacted her life and played a role in her parenting. Great. Let's dig into the Enneagram types and see what we find. Sure thing. I'm going to give an overview of each type. And along the way, Gabe, we can share about what types we are and what type we believe Carson to be. The Dog Friendly San Antonio blog has a great write-up about Enneagram types for dogs. See, I'm not the only person who has thought about this, okay? (laughs) Okay. I think a lot of people probably have typed their dogs. So let's get started. Let's start with type number one. It has a very fun description, and each type also has a name. So Enneagram type one is called the reformer. Type ones are notorious for their sense of right and wrong. They are strong advocates for change and are always looking for ways to improve things. They are orderly and maintain high standards for their way of life. Reformers can make ideal canine units in military branches or police forces. And they have a picture of a German shepherd. And I think overall a German shepherd absolutely would fall in the category of a type one. Enneagram type two is called the helper. And they have a picture of a golden retriever. And it says, odds are you've never met a sweeter dog than a type two. Helpers are ultimate people pleasers. They are kind, generous, and self-sacrificing. You'll likely find them in service dog roles doing it all. From opening refrigerators to comforting a loved one with a warm hug and a wet kiss. That sounds like a golden retriever to me or a Labrador, the big uh, brontosaurus dogs. Yes, they're just super loving and just want to be supportive of you. Then we get into Enneagram type three, the achiever. And here they have pictured a bulldog, which is super cute. Energy and ambition are two words that come to mind when describing a type three. They are diplomatic and poised, but can be overly concerned about what others think of them, making them generally competitive. Achievers can thrive in a competitive setting, such as the AKC annual dog show. I don't think Carson would hold up in the annual dog show. (laughs) I think you'd be more interested in saying hi to everybody in the crowd and seeing uh, who has the best popcorn. (laughs) Be helping themselves to their snacks. Next, we have Enneagram Type 4, the individualist. Individualists are their own type of breed. They have an entirely unique approach to life and are not afraid to see themselves for who they truly are. Though they may struggle with feeling like part of them is missing, they make great friends just the same. That's a lot to analyze about a dog. Well, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) 
You're really digging deep into their psyche. You can tell if they make friends easily or not. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah, sure. So Enneagram type four is the individualist, also known as like like r- the romantic. They're the creative type. You happen to be an Enneagram type four, Gabe. So so tell us about your thoughts on your, your type. <laughs> We're often seen as introverted and quiet, maybe antisocial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we spend a lot of time in our imaginations. We often have to come back from the clouds. Yeah. Sometimes they're dark clouds, but sometimes we have to come back down from the clouds and join the conversation. Be present is what you're always saying to me. <laughs> I just need you to be present. <laughs> yes, I do tell you that all the time. Are you here? Where are you? Can you please come back? The moment I go off, you're like, where did you go? But I will say that it is that creative part of you that even came up with the idea of us to have a podcast about our Jack Russell. So, so there's there's, there's use for a positive it. Positive spin to it all. Absolutely. And you're a type five? Yeah. So, Enneagram type five, that's the investigator. And the description in relation to dogs reads like this it says, Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it's a five's bread and butter. Investigators have a knack for always wanting to know more and dive deep down the rabbit hole of a certain sound or smell. Their ancestors were likely hunting hounds, and that helped track down critters for trade or sustenance. And the website has a picture of a bloodhound. (laughs) That is the most deflated bloodhound I've ever seen. It looks a little wrinkly, but it's okay. (laughs) It doesn't say it in this means, but oftentimes type fives can be somewhat suspicious, I think, because we are constantly investigating and analyzing everything that comes across our path. I'm a thinking type. And so I think that's why I love the Jack Russell breed so much is that they think like their little wheels are always turning. And when we have talked about other types of dogs and maybe getting a different type of dog, I really just keep going back to the Jack Russell because of how smart they are. Like I I want a dog that can engage me, (laughs) you know, (laughs) think with me. (laughs) He quotes philosophy sometimes and (laughs) (laughs) critiques the TV shows we like. (laughs) He watches the Frasier show and he thinks, ah, Eddie, I could do it better than that. But he does like to see his breed represented. He does. (laughs) I think he really does. Before we hear about type six through nine, let's share a couple of comments from puppy parents. We asked them, what do you think is your dog's Enneagram type and why? Cassie S. says her dog is number two at its finest. Labs are known for people-pleasing and the need to be needed. Yes. Emily M. says Nola is definitely a one. Follows all the rules, keeps the other dogs in line, keeps the kids in line. She's the dog that when food spills on the floor, she will guard the food and make sure the other dogs don't eat it because those aren't the rules. (laughs) Dang. I guess she can only eat it when it's in her dish. She's perfectly obedient and needs recognition of her good deeds. Carson guards it to make sure no one else eats it. (laughs) Right. It's. He didn't care about the rules whatsoever. (laughs) He makes the rules. Yeah. Brandy G says, my girl Silo is a three, if I had to guess. She's a a Jack Zoo. So a Jack and a Shih Tzu mix. Wow. With Mm. lots of energy. She's also a quick learner and knows many tricks. If she wants something, she goes for it. (laughs) And here is a video of her winking at me. That's (laughs) that's great. (laughs) That's super cute. Speaking of energy, I could use a little break to recharge. And some coffee. Yes. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of aloha. Genesis Belote, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California. But she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of Aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. ShopAlohaMama.com. Mama. 
The next Enneagram type is type six, the loyalist. And they have a picture of a Boston Terrier. And it says a type six is committed to you and what's best for the family. You can always trust them to be happy to see you when you come home. Though they are the ultimate family dogs, they can be suspicious. Oh, type six are suspicious too. Family is the most important thing to loyalists, so don't be surprised when you bring a friend over and they aren't immediately thrilled to see them. Be sure to give them your seal of approval and they'll be good to go. I think Carson is a type six because he loves us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he can't be without us. I really feel like he's loyal. And I know we've mentioned it before, but like when we go to the dog park, he like, hey, dogs. And then he just wants to play with us. So he's really family oriented. And then he also can be quite suspicious. You're in the room without me. What are you doing? How dare you shut the door? <laughs> he hates that. He hates that. So another aspect of the Enneagram that we haven't talked about yet is even though you have a dominant type, like I'm a type five. There's then what's called a wing, meaning you kind of swing back on the pendulum to one of the numbers right next to your number. So I'm a type five with a wing of a four. Gabe is a type four with a wing of a five. Perfectly yin and yang. Yes, that's why we get along well most of the time. (laughs) (laughs) Most of the time. And so Carson, I feel he is a type six with a wing of a seven, because although he's very loyal, he is also very similar to the type seven, which is the enthusiast. So the type sevens, energy and optimism exude from them. They look at the world with adventure in their hearts, ready to explore and experience all it has to offer. Enthusiasts are natural extroverts, and they'll always be the first to say hello at the dog park. Their extroverted tendencies make them susceptible to impulsiveness. Mm -hmm. Carson is somewhat impulsive (laughs) and may have a reputation for seeming scatterbrained at times. So so he has those moments where he's very outgoing. He he definitely says hi to all the people that come into the dog park on the rare occasions when there's a a very high energy small dog or like a a puppy, especially he loves puppies of all breeds. Mm -hmm. He'll just play and play and play. But when people bring treats and toys for their dogs, he gets right in the mix (laughs) and uh, steals their toys and runs around and we have to chase him and return them. So yeah, he has those moments where he's, he's not so loyal to us anymore. He goes off and finds adventure. Yes. So that's why he has the wing of a seven. The next type is type eight, which is the challenger. And they have a picture of a Doberman pincher. Type eight is strong and self-confident, but they can also seem intimidating and confrontational. Despite the need for dominance, they can use their strength to improve others' lives in a heroic way. If your pup is a type eight, do yourself a favor and get them some shades. No number eight should be without sunglasses. It's a fact of life. Okay, so I should get Carson some shades because the way things work in our house, I know you think he's a six. He's super loyal and loving, but it's like, well, from your vantage point, it makes (laughs) sense because you're the alpha. He's number two, and he's let me know on many, many occasions that I'm number three. He actually (laughs) holds up his paw with three little toes sticking up to remind me on a regular basis. I would say he's an eight, the challenger, the strong man. He's an eight with the wing of a king. So as long as I'm a good, loyal subject, bring him his slippers and keep his bowl full, then we're in a good place together. Wow. So it's all about perspective. I, yeah, well, I suppose it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is that is a reality for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still you think know he's it's a true. Shape. You know it's true. <laughs> Okay, well, moving on. So from type eight to type nine, type nine is the peacemaker. And this is a picture of a border collie. Type nine is the most chill type you'll ever meet. They are in a constant state of Zen and excel at finding painless solutions to problems. If type nine could have it their way, everything would be without conflict. Because of this, they can tend to be complacent, minimizing anything upsetting as long as you don't expect them to do anything more than love you unconditionally they'll be fine i don't know we thought that carson would be that you know like kind of type nine peacemaker just chill and loving because we (laughs) our last jack was like 17 and a half before we uh we lost him and so that's kind of what he was he 
but he was kind of that way his whole life. So he just got more and more chill as he got older and older. Right. And so, but I think that's what's pretty cool about personalities in general, right? Whether people or dogs, we find a way to make it work. We find a way to love each other despite our differences. Keep them happy. (laughs) Stop. Happy puppy, happy life. That's right. That's very true. Here are a few more puppy parent responses to what do you think your dog's Enneagram type is and why? Emily C. says Mocha is a seven with a wing of an eight. She loves people more than dogs, but also does things like look right at you when she pees in the house when she was a puppy, of course. Draker D. says, my wife and I are totally convinced that our dog, Jonas, is a six. He is a total loyalist and craves security. Nancy G. says her dog is a seven. She always wants to play, and she's 11 years old. She has a lot of toys and bumps into everything because she doesn't pay attention. She's funny and very curious and nosy, and it's a jack. Of course, it's a jack. Caitlin R. says, I thought I was the only one to figure out my dog's Enneagram. (laughs) (laughs) She's got a bunch of laugh cry emojis. Caitlin, you are not the only one. This is the most fun thing to do. (laughs) And she says that my big dog lab is a nine with a wing of a one, very chill and tidy. And he sings to cello music. Ah, he's sophisticated. He's a sophisticated type nine. (laughs) So cute. (laughs) We'll be right back with our special guest and Enneagram expert, Kelsey Taylor. So what's next in this fascinating world of the Enneagram? Now it's time to hear from Kelsey. She is going to go a little deeper than we have to this point. And as a type five, I cannot wait. We are here with Kelsey Taylor, who is a dear friend and Enneagram expert. We have had several conversations about the Enneagram, and Kelsey, I've so enjoyed those conversations. I always find you to be so knowledgeable and articulate on the topic. So why don't you tell us, how were you introduced to the Enneagram? Oh, thank you, Rebecca. I'm so excited to be here. And I love the positive spin that you put on this because sometimes people tell me I'm a little overly passionate. So I I will stick with knowledgeable. Absolutely. (laughs) To answer your question, I first heard about the Enneagram almost almost exactly five years ago on a podcast, uh, one of Dave Ramsey's Entree Leadership podcasts. And Ian Morgan Cron was being interviewed on the podcast. He wrote the book uh, or co-authored the book, The Road Back to You. And on the podcast, he was just kind of going through explaining what the Enneagram is. And I remember thinking, hmm, I should take that assessment. So as soon as the podcast was done, I like raced to my computer, typed in the website and took my assessment. And I got results that just basically said, you're the type one perfectionist. And so I read a brief description and thought, hmm, yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds pretty <laughs> accurate. <laughs> and then I kind of left it at that. I didn't think anything uh, really of it until a couple of months after that, my husband actually purchased the book, The Road Back to You, and he began to start reading it. I remember I was laughing so hard when he handed me the checklist for the type one. And he had even like written my name at the top of the book, like, would this be Kelsey? And I was just like, yes, absolutely. And so it wasn't until he purchased the book that I really got engrossed in the Enneagram because now I have this other person in my life that I could talk to about it. Yeah, absolutely. I I think that is really the thing, right? Like to have people in your life who you can talk to about this and they get it and they they get that you're a type one and, and then I'm a type five. What that means, right? It is so much more fun. It really helps you understand other people and where they're coming from and how they operate. And if you care about them and want to get to know them better and have deeper, more fulfilling relationships, the Enneagram is a good place to start. Oh man, that's perfectly said. And when you have people in your life, they really bring the knowledge that's just on the pages. They kind of bring that to life. So what role has the Enneagram played in your life um, besides drawing you closer to your husband? Oh man. And that's a big one too, but I have to say Enneagram in general has just 
made all aspects of my life better because it has helped me understand myself, why I do the things that I do, and then understanding other people, why other people do the things they do. So I always tell people the Enneagram, first and foremost, is a place where you can build self-awareness. And once you have a good grounding for that, then you have the capacity and the space to really see the world from the perspective of other people. And so um, I've, I've also found the Enneagram to give me the ability to identify whether I'm healthy or when I'm stressed and then ways that I can kind of help get back on track. So for instance, gosh, a few years back, I was having some stress around a big project at work and my Apple watch would like alert me and say, hey, your heartbeat rose to 150 beats per minute while you appear to be sitting. And I would just look at my watch and think, what? (laughs) <laughs> Kelsey, that's crazy. Wild. It was so wild. And so I think the Enneagram works exactly like that alert. It just helps you become aware of those unhealthy behaviors that you wouldn't otherwise be attuned to so you can get some help. And I intentionally use the word help uh, because my irregular heartbeat, I needed help. I could not fix that. So I needed to go to a doctor. And I and I hate giving off the impression that the Enneagram will just fix you because it doesn't. But with the Enneagram does do is it it just gives you the awareness. So how has the Enneagram affected your parenting? Here are so many really phenomenal things uh, where the Enneagram can come into play. As a type one, I know now through the Enneagram how I can sometimes forget to have fun, but fun is so essential for your kids. And I have a three and a five-year-old. And so fun is even more, especially I feel like essential for this age group. And so I have a tendency to want to put off all the fun until all the work is done. The problem with that is that the work is just never done. And so I have zero fun. Knowing and being aware of that weakness of mine, um, now I have intentional um, scheduled fun where I get to do something just for the sake of fun. And that has been such a blessing because it makes me really engage with my kids and enjoy them. And I don't feel like I'm putting off some of these really beautiful moments until uh, later and yet later never comes. Fun is essential to children and to our pets. I know that Carson will decide late afternoon that I have worked enough and he starts bringing me toys, pulling on my arm to get me out of the chair. He helps me make time for fun. So have you ever been a dog parent? Oh, yes. We are dog people. Uh, We have two dogs actually at the moment. A Dachshund Terrier mix. Her name is Lila. She's seven. And then we also have a black lab named Tucker. If you were to guess their Enneagram types, what would they be? Oh, we've had tons of conversations around this. (laughs) My husband and I, we both agree that our Dachshund Terrier mix, we know that she is a type six beyond the shadow of a doubt because She is extremely playful and jovial. She captures that like really lighthearted, fun and playful essence of the type six. But she also lives in constant anxiety. And I think this is partly because when we found her, she was lost or abandoned. We just found her on the side of the road and took her in. And and she does not do well with storms. She does not do uh, well with strangers. And so we think it might be tied back to that time in her life where she was lost or abandoned. And then we also think she might just be anxious because she lives with a three and a five-year-old um, who are <laughs> constantly trying to love her and they just chase her around the house. And so she does not perceive that as love. And then Tucker, our lab, we would, we would say he's a nine. Nines can be very fun and upbeat and and easygoing, and we definitely see that in him. But most of the time, he kind of matches the mood of the family. So if we are all wanting to play, he is totally there and he wants to play. But if we're all just wanting to hang out, chill and relax, then he's all too happy to, to hang out and relax too. I just have a couple more questions for you. So, and this is probably a tough one, but taking on everything that you know about the Enneagram and how it's affected your life and your parenting, what is the most important? piece of advice you would like to share with listeners today? Yeah. Oh, I touched on this earlier, but I think it's appropriate to come back and just emphasize the most important thing, especially in regards to the Enneagram, is to remember that the, the Enneagram itself is not the ultimate fix. It is simply just a very useful and helpful tool. And just lastly, uh, what are your future plans with Enneagram coaching and teaching? 
That's a fun question. I love that you asked that. Future plans, honestly, for, for teaching is just to build awareness and to share the knowledge and uh, the gift that the Enneagram has been for me personally, for my marriage, for parenting, and then how I work in the workplace. I have a big passion for team trainings and team buildings. So that's kind of where the Venn diagram overlaps for me with the Enneagram is I'd love to get into small businesses or business organizations and have them have this common language where they can understand themselves and each other. That sounds wonderful. And I truly hope that this continues for you along those lines, because I think it's really a great fit for you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. Yes, thank you so much for giving us your time today and sharing with our listeners how much benefit that the Enneagram can bring to their lives. We know that the Enneagram was designed for human personalities. But if your dog is anything like ours, They have more personality than we know what to do with. Whether you're parenting your dog or your little humans, or whether you're working on your marriage or other important relationships, the Enneagram is a great place to start. Carson thinks so, too. I'll be right there, Your Majesty. Thank you for listening. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.